back to my Epoch server tutorial series where I show you how to set up and modify your own DAISY Epoch server. We are covering another one of AxCop's mods this time, the elevator script. The script allows you to create elevators within your plot radius. Now to start off you'll need to go to the link in the description so that you can get to this github page. On the right here you'll see a download zip option. Go ahead and download it and move it over to your desktop. Also, you'll want to extract it. Now when that's finished, you'll have the files that are needed for this tutorial. So the next thing we'll do is go inside of our epoch server and open up the mission folder that we're going to be using. For me, I'm using the Chunaris map, so I'll have to go into MP Missions and find the 11 Chunaris folder. Once you're in your mission folder, you'll need to open up the init SQF. Now, in here, you'll need to find the if not is dedicated code block. When you find that, you'll have to come back over here to the GitHub page and copy the elevator code right here. So we'll copy that and paste it at the bottom of this dedicated code block. It doesn't matter if your code block here looks different than mine, just make sure that you place this at the bottom of it. Now go ahead and save your init, but keep it open. We're going to need to do one more small change to it. Next thing you'll need to do is open up your server again. In here you'll see your at daisy epoch folder. Open that. Open the add-ons folder. And then you'll see a bunch of PBOs in here. What you need to do is find the DAISY code PBO. Use your PBO extractor, whichever one you use, I'm using PBO Manager, and extract the code. It'll make a folder at the top here. Once yours is finished, just open it up and look for the init folder within, within this. Inside of that, you'll find a few SQF files. The one we want to deal with is the variables.sqf. Go ahead, just right click and copy it for now. When you've got it copied, you can close that folder and go back over to your missions folder. In your missions folder, we're going to go ahead and make another folder inside of it called custom. Make sure you have the C lowercase. Now open that new custom folder and paste the variables SQF inside of it. When all of those steps are done, open the variables SQF. Now when you've got this variables SQF open, go ahead and search for allowed objects. It's not case sensitive, you just have to type in allowed objects. For most applications, you can use Control F to bring up the search window, or you can go to Edit and Find. So, the first thing that it comes across should be Daisy Allowed Objects, as you can see right here on the left. For me, it's at line 556. It may be a different line for you depending on the epoch version you are using. Now, just scroll all the way to the right and you'll come to the end of the code. Make sure that you're still on line 556. Now to make sure that everything is spelled properly, we're going to go ahead and just copy it over from another file. So just minimize that and open the files that we've downloaded. In here you'll find the elevator folder and inside of that look for the elevator in it. 
When you open the elevator in it, you'll get code like this. Look for where it says Metal Floor Preview DZ. Copy it and the quotes. Make sure you have the quotes copied. And then we'll go back over to the variable SQF. Right where the last quote ends, put a comma so that it looks like this. Onto the right of that comma, paste in the code that we copied. So now it should read the same thing but with a comma, quotation, metal floor, underscore preview, underscore DZ, quotation mark, and then save the file. Now come back over to the init SQF and find out where it says variables here. Now change the stuff inside these quotes so that it says custom slash variables dot sqf. This now links it to the variable files that we've customized. Now go ahead and save the init sqf. Now that all the code is saved, we'll just have to copy over all of the files required. So go back to your missions folder and into the files that we've downloaded. Copy the elevator script over into your missions folder and then that completes the install. Now a couple of small things that should be noted before you leave is the elevator script can be a little glitchy sometimes. It hasn't been perfected by AxCop yet. If two players on, are on one elevator there's a chance that the one that did not activate the elevator will fall through. It's caused by a weird desync with the server. I don't know if he's still working on that or not, but that is one issue with it. And also make sure that elevators are always placed behind locked doors. Anyone can access the elevator. It is not specific to the creator. If you want to make edits to the file, what we can do is open up the elevator in our missions folder and again open the elevator in it. Don't use the one we already had open because that's in the wrong directory. Use the one that we're opening right now inside of the correct directory. Now in here you'll see that there's a global variables area right here. This is where most of your edits will take place. You can edit other areas but I suggest not doing that unless you know exactly what you're doing. This first part here pertains to the actual elevator class. You can see that we use a metal floor for the elevator. If you want to change what kind of floor is used for that or what kind of object, you can do that here. You have to use the correct class name though. And the next line has the elevator stop class. When you upgrade the elevator, this is what it will look like. So when you upgrade the metal floor into an elevator, and then you upgrade another metal floor into a stop, this is what the elevator stop looks like. It will look like the preview function of the metal floor. So the preview is what it looks like when you start to build something. When you open it up and pull it out, you'll see that it's kind of see-through when you're moving around. That's what this preview is. Preview classes are kind of ghosted versions of the original class. It is not a solid object, so if you stand on it, you will fall through it. This can be changed, but if you change that to something else, you have to come back into the variables SQF and add it here, like we did before. If you do not, then your elevator will not work. The next line is the max range for the elevator. It's defaultly set to 25. I've upgraded it to 30 simply because that is the size of the general plot. Now this isn't the range for the elevator as a whole. This is the range for each individual stop. So if you have three elevator stops, stop one can be 30 meters from the original point of the elevator. And then stop two can be 30 meters away from the first stop. So it only goes in 30 meter increments. You can increase this to whatever range you want. You can make it 300. This is the size of the actual elevator flooring per meter. This is the speed of the elevator. Now the speed of the elevator is kind of an important thing to not mess up too much. 
I'll go over that here in a second. The elevator stop wait time. This is the time it waits at each stop when you call it. If you have multiple stops, you can call it up to that stop. So if you're on stop 3 and the elevator is still on the base floor, if you call it, it will move up and it'll wait 5 seconds at each stop. You can lower this. I think I'll actually lower it to 2 in the file download. So you may want to change that to whatever you like. Now here's where the elevator speed becomes very important. The elevator speed is default 2 and the updates per second is defaulted at 60. The way this works is for every one elevator speed you increase, you should increase the updates per second by 30. As you can see, I have the speed at 5, and 5 times 3 is 150. So that's how many updates per second it is. This is the animation effect that you see when it moves. If you don't have the updates correctly synced, it will be incredibly glitchy. It's still a little glitchy right now, but having a huge difference between the two would make it really bad. Now right here you can see the items that are required to build the elevator and elevator stop. So you have to have a toolbox and a crowbar to do that. This is the list of parts required to build the elevator. Right now it's set so that you have to have four scrap metal, part generic is a scrap metal, one engine, one generator, and one full jerry can. You can change this however you like. If you don't want a generator required, you can just delete that. It's really up to you. You can also make it free by simply removing everything in it. And now it requires nothing to actually build it. Now to build the elevator stop, you need four scrap metal. You still need these tools to build the stop as well. And that's pretty much all the information you need to modify the elevator script. There's a lot of other stuff you can do, but that's only for extremely advanced users, and I would suggest not messing with it unless you know what you're doing. So now that your edits are finished, you can go ahead and save your file, and load up your server, and do as you wish. Now, remember that this is not my script, it was created by AxCop. I have done a couple of small edits to it, but nothing big. I may try to fix some of the desync problems that I was talking about earlier, but that's still up for debate right now. He has not put up any edits to this in a very long time, so I doubt he's still working on it. So any of the glitches or bugs with it, no one's really working on it, and there aren't much fixes for it. However, a lot of people have requested the script, and it is a really fun one. You can use vehicles and everything on this, and I use it on my server. And it is really a nice script. That way you can actually get up high in a base without having to have everything on the ground level. But as always, if there are some issues that you're having and you can't get it to work properly, leave a comment in the description. Please do not add me on Steam or any other type of messenger that's out there. I have people trying to add me on Skype and all these other things. Those are my personal tools for my personal life. If you need help, only contact me either on the Epoch forums or right here on YouTube. I won't answer requests on anything else because that's only for contacts with friends and family. I do have a good amount of videos coming up after this one for a few other tutorials, so be on the lookout for those. And as always, thank you for watching.